is your life, it is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth. That world away. outside there is not waiting for a new definition of Christianity, it's waiting for a new demonstration of Christianity. Would I be out of line in order if I were to talk to you for a little while about utilitarian religion and expedient Christianity? And the question that you're going to ask yourself is, is God an end or is he a mean? And you have to decide very early in your Christian life whether you're viewing God as an end or a mean. A more challenging question than this text, what is your life? The philosophy of the day became humanism, and you can define humanism this way. Humanism is a philosophical statement that declares the end of all being is the happiness of man. The, the reason for existence is man's happiness. Now, according to humanism, salvation is simply a matter of getting all the happiness you can out of life. This group of my people, the fundamentalists, that say, uh, we believe in the inspiration of the Bible. We believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. We believe in hell. We believe in heaven. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Remember, the atmosphere is that of humanism. And humanism says the chief end of being is the happiness of man. So it wasn't long until we had this that the fundamentalists knew each other because they said, we believe these things. They were men, for the most part, that had met God. But, you see, it wasn't long until, having said, these are the things that establish us as fundamentalists, the second generation said, this is how we become a fundamentalist. Believe in the inspiration of the Bible, believe in the deity of Christ, believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, and thereby become a fundamentalist. And so it wasn't long until it got to our generation, where the whole plan of salvation was to give intellectual assent to a few statements of doctrine. And a person was considered a Christian because he could say, uh-huh at four or five places that he was asked to. And if he knew where to say, uh-huh, someone would pat him on the back, shake his hand, smile broadly, and say, Brother, you're safe. At what cost? And so it had gotten down to the place where salvation was nothing more than an ascent to a scheme or a, a formula. And the end of this salvation was the happiness of man, because humanism has penetrated. And so if you were to analyze the fundamentalism in contrast to liberalism of a hundred years ago, as it developed, be like this. The liberal says the end of religion is to make man happy while he's alive. And the fundamentalist says the end of religion is to make man happy when he dies. We're still paddling on the edge of the ocean of the possibilities of grace. Put a holy dissatisfaction in us tonight. Until we find it something like this. Re accept Jesus so you can go to heaven. You don't want to go to that old, filthy, nasty, burning hell when there's a beautiful heaven up there. Now come to Jesus so that you can go to heaven. And the appeal could be as much to selfishness as a couple of men sitting in a coffee shop deciding they're going to rag, rob a bank to get something for nothing. It becomes so subtle that it goes everywhere. What is it? In essence, it's this. That this philosophical postulate that the end of all being is the happiness of man has been a sort of covered over with evangelical terms and biblical doctrine until God reigns in heaven for the happiness of man, Jesus Christ was incarnate for the happiness of man, all the angels exist in the whole, everything is for the happiness of man, and I submit to you that this is unchristian. Christianity says the end of all being is the glory of God. Humanism says the end of all being is the happiness of man. This is the betrayal of the ages! And it's the betrayal in which we live, and I don't see how God can revive it. Until we come back to Christianity. Isn't man happy? Doesn't God intend to make man happy? But as a byproduct, and not a prime product. And the question isn't where you're challenged, the question is where you're changed.